Hi everyone. Um, our badge is Saikom, and we will be presenting about the definition of our badge, what we decided to do, our data, and our conclusion. So, what is Saikom? According to the badge definition, is that many of the big decisions we face as a society require us to have knowledge and understanding of scientific concepts and processes. Yet many of us think science is something done only by the experts or the professionals. For this badging pathway, we explore citizen science, participate in a citizen science program, and we practice our hand at communicating public science. So what we get from this badge is that we use science to communicate. And when it comes to the word science, everyone like some, most people think science can only be done by experts or someone who takes chemistry in high school. But in fact, science can be done by everyone. So this is our lake. Uh, it's called Sudan Lake. So the way uh, we did our uh, experiment is just we identify a big problem that had that is happening around our community, especially in Tanik Lake. And we found out that uh, there is a lot of pollution uh, on the lake. And this is just some pictures uh, to show you guys. And it was taken around my house. And yeah, people have been throwing trash and without any regards to uh, the living things such as fish and the plants that live in the water and it's actually uh, affecting the fish population and also the plants in the water and just to show you how bad it is i have some video over here Wait, can you guys see it? Yeah, if it has audio, did you remember to do what I asked Penn to do at the beginning and check that that box? Oh, yeah. Just go back and start over with that. Um, it really makes a difference. So, uh, David, you you on the computer, right? Yep. Right. So when you click on share screen, there's a green, the green button is share screen, right? Uh -huh. When you click on share screen and then uh, it allows oh. you the many options, right? And then underneath those options, like on the bottom of your screen, there's two circles. Enable computer sound and optimize something. You have to unshare first to get to it and then reshare. When you... There you go. Now, when you click on share screen, you see the two things at the bottom. Check those both. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. And then share again. Great. All right. Sorry, guys. Yeah, that's just about it. And how do we get our data? Uh, so we do a water testing, uh, testing quality. Uh, we use a disk and litmus paper. And actually there is 
uh, more stuff that you can use to uh, testing water quality, but we cannot find those stuff in Papua. We just have uh, sexy disks and litmus paper. So the sexy disk is uh, the thing you use to measure the water quality and litmus paper is just to measure the acid level on water. And we also do some interview with the people just to get uh, more information and different perspective. And yeah, this is our data. Uh, so this is what such a disk looks like. And does anyone know how to use such a disk? I know that everyone is familiar with uh, litmus paper, but does anyone know what's uh, how to use such a disk? Does anyone? No. All right. So the such disk. Uh, so uh, it measure the water quality with uh, distance, I guess. So for example, it's just like uh, you have two glass uh, of, uh, you have milk and you have water in, in a glass and then you drop a coin in the milk. And then when you see it from above, you cannot see the coin that is on the bottom of the, on the milk glass. But if you uh, drop the coin on the plate of water, uh, you can see the coin that is under on the bottom of the glass. So it's just uh, we measure the quality of water with distance. So in the, we do this in two different places, the crowded area and the less crowded area. Uh, in the crowded area, there's more pollution, such as uh, like the picture that I took in my place. Uh, and we got uh, 82 centimeter, uh, the such a disc go down for about 82 centi centimeters. And in the last current area, the such a disc go down for about uh, 122. So it goes a lot deeper, which indicates that the water is clear. And then the litmus paper. So in, uh, in both places, the current area and the less current area, uh, we found that the, the litmus paper doesn't change color. So uh, the Lumos paper only changed color in between the range of 4.5 to 8.5. So it doesn't change color. So it goes between this number. And we could have got more data, but uh, we don't have like a proper equipment to do so, especially the Lumos paper. Uh, there is actually a better litmus paper that you can use to like acquire a specific data for testing water. But yeah, we like uh, that piece. So the interview question session. So like they could say, we couldn't get enough data. So we decided to do interview to some people. We listed some questions to ask like a few people who lives around around the lake. And here are the questions. So we interview two people. One one from one who lives in a polluted area, which is Mr. Dell, and one who lives in a clear water area, which is Mr. Pardo. So the first question we ask is whether they live around the lake or not. And we asked about the ways that they throw, either they throw it in the lake or they burn it or whatever. And according to Mr. Potter, who is apparently a fisherman and who has lived all his entire life around the lake, he admits that he and his family been have been throwing their trash in the lake and it's pretty, I mean it seems to me that it, it's affecting the lake but he said it doesn't affect the lake and the next question we ask is what differences that happen in the lake and Mr. Dow said that he has obs observed that there are many there are more trash every day and Mr. Potter is more into the infrastructure 
as the big change in the lake, he said that um, more people start building more houses and restaurants around the lake and maybe throw their waste into the lake. And the next question we ask is about how many fish they catch. We think we should ask about the amount of fish they catch because we are testing the water quality and it's important to know if the water quality affects the um, species that lives in the water. So we ask about the amount of fish and Mr. Pare is a fisherman and he said that the waste doesn't, the waste don't affect the amount of fish that they catch, but it affects the size of the fish that they catch. So he said that they used to catch big fish back in the days, but now they're catching like small fish. And according to Mr. Dowell, he said that he only gets four to five small fish in a day. And he thinks that the trash, the trash does affect the amount of fish that they catch. And the last question we ask is, what is the best habitat for the fish to live? And both of them said clear water is the best habitat for the fish. So to conclude that we said that Santana Lake is one of the great natural resource and an asset for Papua. Not only it brings income, it also the home to many species of fish. And a lot of people take advantage from the lake, but they don't maintain the health of the lake. Many ways from houses and restaurants are polluting the water. Thus it affects the species that live under the water. From this experiment, we both hope that we can raise awareness for the citizens, for the people who live around the lake or for those who don't live around the lake to be open-minded for the actions that they take on the lake. We are concerned that if people don't take enough care of the lake, our future generations might suffer and we might lose one of our greatest assets. So that's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, guys. <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you. I do have some questions, though. You did uh, you begged a couple of questions that piqued my curiosity. Um, Me too. You said um, several times, especially at the beginning, that there were other resources that weren't available to you. So I put my question actually in the chat. What would those resources be and what would their value be um, over what you did have? So we like more on the equipment, like uh, things to measure uh, temperature. Uh, what else? Uh, there is a lot of stuff, but I can't remember what it is. Will you include include a list of those things in your? Oh yeah. Other questions? Yes, from me. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, from somebody who's worked in an aquarium all his life, I have a couple of questions to ask you. And this might be, you know, a little bit like on the more science-y side. So remember the bucket that you use to, you know, show water quality? Yeah. By at the depth at which you can see the bottom of the water? Yeah. So, you know, there's more, like there's many things that can be considered harmful that you can't see that's actually clear and transparent, you know? So it's one of like the big, like, like looking at it, it's one of, the, you know, the bigger flaws that can happen when you're using an equipment like that. Because here's a couple of things that, that I can recommend um, that are like, um, causes of, of, of water cloudiness and between the both of them, like what I'm typing in the chat, it's not always dangerous, you know, but spilled chemicals 
like high levels of ammonia in the water or nitride or nitrate can kill fish, can, can kill fish and cause sickness on humans, but it doesn't necessarily make the water cloudy. So what do you suggest if I ask you this question? If there's any way we can test, like address this problem of having like chemicals in the water that we can't see that made the water harmful, what's your opinion? Just from opinion only, what do you think we can do to help us either test, study, or actually improve the water conditions, the things that we can't see? Well, again, uh, it's just from my opinion. Uh, so when we do the water testing, uh, we like the stuff, like just like you say. And the safety disk is actually made by me. We cannot find the safety disk in here. And yeah, so I made it. That's pretty cool. Man. <laughs> uh, the so to uh, to measure the what what do you, what do you say? Uh, the nitrate level on the water. Is it? Yep. I don't know. Yeah. Stuff, but uh, we don't have those stuff in here, so it is really hard to get like a uh, specific data when you don't have like uh, enough equipment. And to say that we can uh, reduce uh, the pollution that is on the water uh, without enough equipment is really hard, I would say. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome. Other questions? This is just a procedural question, David and Alita. None of this is in your folders. Your folders are empty. Can you please get your work into your folders so I can see what you're doing? Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, and in the future, all of you, make sure that you're working from your folders right from the start so that I see each of your levels developing. That's really important. I just saw some great work from two people that I thought hadn't done anything. So, because the folders are empty. So, uh, thank you for the presentation. It was very good. Also, uh, as you go through that checklist, you'll see that Hopefully you have transcripts of those interviews and a transcript and a um, storyboard for that video, uh, that, uh, I mean, that slideshow. So take a look at those.